the prince recited the mantra in the elephant's ear and the elephant lay down. Both hurriedly got off its back. They went near the tree that was buried in the sand. The fate of the ship was pitiful to see. Mat trees were broken in random places. They suspected that there might be someone inside or in the neighborhood of the wreck. The prince clapped his hands and made a noise. Pungazali shouted with her mouth closed and there was no response. The two went down into the water and climbed up, holding onto the edge of the ship. The ship's floorboards were split open and water and sand were pouring in. The desire to perhaps push it into the water and throw it into the sea was frustrated. It was impossible to move the ship from there on water. An elephant is not enough to drag it ashore, we want many elephants and many people. Carpenters must have worked for months to pave it. The prince looked at the tiger flag stuck among the mangled sails. It was obvious that it caused him a lot of heartache. Bungu. Is this one of the ships you saw? He asked. That's what it looks like. Looks like another ship has sunk and been lost. Said Punghuali. Her voice tinged with glee. What's all the excitement? Asked the prince. Wouldn't I be happy if the ships that came to take them captive were lost? Said Punghuali. It is wrong for you to be excited, say Madra Kumari. Something terrible has happened. It pains me that this fate has befallen the tiger flag tree. I don't know how it happened. What happened to the soldiers and sailors in it? I feel even more confused when I think about it. You say another ship must have sunk. I'm telling you it's probably drowned. It's better if it's drowned. It's not good, there will never be a day like that. Another ship could have gone to a place where there is a lot of water after seeing the fate of this ship. I don't know why this ship should have come so close to the shore. The Chola sailors have been in the lineage for thousands of years and used to leave the ship. Why did they make such a mistake? Anyway, the people here must have escaped. One must have boarded the other ship. Come. Let's go and see. Where to look, Prince? The sun is setting and darkness is closing in on all sides. Said Punghuali. Say Madrakumari. Where did you leave your boat? My boat is almost in the middle of this river, isn't it? We came so quickly because we came on an elephant, and because you drove the elephant. If we had taken the boat, we would have been here by midnight. Well. Let's go and see this river bank before it's well dark. The trees here hide the sea from view. Perhaps another ship could be brought a little farther out to sea and stopped. Leaving the elephant there, both of them went along the river bank towards the sea. Soon the beach was reached. The sea was calm. There is no sign of a wave. As far as the eye could see, it seemed like a single green canvas. The green of the sea and the pale blue of the sky blended together far away. Neither the tree nor the boat was visible. A couple of birds flew from the sea towards the shore. That's it. He stood there for a while, looked around and said, OK. Let's go to the smoldering wood. Said the prince. Both started walking back the way they came. Punguzali. I will never forget the help you have done me. But here we must part, said the prince. Punghuali was silent. Do you hear me? I have decided to wait in that sunken ship. The captain and others will come to find this place anyway. I will consult with them and decide what to do above. But you have no more business here. Find your boat and go. I will tell you about my father. Remember what was said. Bongazali hesitated and leaned on a tree there. She grabbed one of its low branches. What is Samadra Kumari? What? Never mind, Prince. I'll bid you farewell here, come on. Wrath, you flower. Anger? What authority does this demon have to be angry with them? I am not so arrogant. Then why are you suddenly standing here? No anger, sir. Just weariness. I've slept for two days. I'll lie here for a while and go in search of my boat. It was the day after the full moon. So at that time the moon was rising in the deep sea. 
a couple of faint rays fell on the face of Pungazali as well. The prince saw that face. He saw the weariness and tiredness in it. He also saw the eyes closing and the lids closing on their own. When the moon rises, it is natural for the centimars to gather. But it is not enough to say that Pungawali's face was piled up at that time. It was withered and tired. Girl! It's been two days since you slept? How many days since you ate? Said. It's been two days since I've eaten and I don't feel hungry until I've been with them. What do you call my stupidity? Today we all feasted to fill our bellies. Have you eaten? I failed to even ask. Come. Pungujali. Come with me to that sunken ship. I remember seeing grain scattered about it. Let's collect the grain and cook it together tonight and eat it. After you eat you can go on your way. Sir. If I eat, I'll lie down and fall asleep right away. My eyes are spinning right now. So what? You lie in peace on that sunken ship and sleep. The elephant and I keep watch from the shore. When the day comes you look for your boat. Saying this, the prince took Pungazali's arm as if he were supporting her and led her away. He saw that indeed her legs were wobbly. Tears welled up in his eyes when he thought that the woman's love was equal in all seven worlds. Who was that lady was known in the next moment. The old woman did not seem surprised to see them. She seemed to be expecting them. Amadhatai welcomed them without the help of verbal communication. She created the elixir for a while. The rice and potatoes offered by this old lady seemed to the prince to be more delicious than all the royal feasts he had in the old palace. After eating, the three went to the deck of the ship. The moon was now well up. From the ship's deck one could see the confluence of the sea and the estuary and the vast ocean beyond. The sea, which had appeared like a green copper plate in the darkness of the evening, now became a golden plate illuminated by the rays of the golden moon. Even though they were out in the open at night in a place surrounded by water, they were sweating profusely. Air is not love. The old lady somehow got to know what the prince told Pungazali about this. She pointed out that there was a grey circle around the moon in the sky. If it is circling the moon, it is a sign that storms and rains will come, Pungjali explained. Let the storm come when it comes, just a little wind now. Said the prince. Then he expressed his astonishment as to how the old lady could have reached there so soon. This is no great thing to my aunt, she has done more wonderful things. Said Punghuali. And their love for him is boundless. What can't the power of love accomplish? She said. The old lady somehow knew this talk and turned the face of Punghuali and pointed to a direction. There stood the elephant they had climbed. Both were amazed to see a majestic high caste horse standing next to it. Did he come on this horse? Does he know how to ride a horse? Asked the prince in astonishment. There is nothing auntie does not know. She knows how to mount a horse and how to mount an elephant. She knows how to make a boat. Sometimes it seems as if she is travelling on the wind. She gets from one place to another so quickly. We wonder how she could have gotten there. The prince was then struck with another surprise. The majesty of the horse grazing on the bank caused him such awe. Isn't this one of the highest caste horses that grows in the Arab country? How did it get here? How did this old lady get it? He said to himself. Pung Jalai asked the dumb queen about this in sign language. Yes, we can call the old lady dumb queen now, can't we? The horse washed ashore from the sea near the elephant's death area, and when it came ashore it was standing in awe. She also informed that she was climbing on top of it. Hearing this, the prince's astonishment increased. While talking, the prince noticed that Pung Jalai's eyelids were closing. You said you were sleepy earlier. Lie down. Said. Saying that is the delay. Pungazali moved away from her and took a ship mat lying beside her and wrapped it around her. She fell asleep for a while. From the posture in which she breathed it was clear that she had fallen asleep. Aha! Van Dye the Van was humming the same song yesterday. He seems to have learned from her. 
Another time the prince thought that he should ask Samathira Kumara to sing the whole song while she was awake. Immediately his attention went to the mute queen. Aha! Everyone's indigestion sometimes. Excitement! But what is the allegory for the inner turmoil of this old woman who can't express her emotions? How many obscenities, how many joys, how many sorrows, how much anger and rage she has kept in her heart? How long has she held back? The dumb queen moved and sat next to the prince. She lovingly combed his scalp. She gently touched both his cheeks with her strong diamond-encrusted hands like touching a flower. For a while the prince did not know what to do. Then he touched the old woman's feet and put them in his eyes. She held those hands and kept them on her face. The prince's hands were soon wet with the tears that had welled up in the eyes of the princess. The mute queen signalled the prince to lie down and sleep. She said she was on guard and to sleep without worry. The prince did not seem sleepy. But he laid down to satisfy her. Long after he lay down, the sea inside him was raging. Then a little cold wind came outside. The body was cold and the soul was congested, I fell asleep easily. But even in sleep the prince's mind was not at peace. He had strange dreams. Mounted on one of the best horses of the Arabian nation, he travelled through the sky. He crossed the clouds and entered the sky. There Devendran took him to Aravada. He asked him to sit on his golden lion. Oh! I don't want this, I want to put my great mother, the dumb queen, on this statue, said the prince. Devendran smiled and said, let her come here and see later. Devendran gave the divine nectar to the prince and asked him to drink it. The prince drank and said, Oh! Is this not as good as Kaveri water? Said. Devendran took the prince to that place. There were many Deva women there. Indrani looked at the prince and said, She said, You may marry her who is the most beautiful among these women. The prince looked and said, None of these will come close to the beauty of Pungjalai. Suddenly Indrani turned into a younger brat. Grace! Have you forgotten my Vanati? she asked. The prince said, Sister! Sister! How long are you going to keep me as a slave? Then the prison of thy love, on the nether prison of the Avenger. Set me free. Otherwise make me stay in the palace like Virata Rajan's son Atara Kumara. I am passing the time in music said the younger Prati Kundave, who placed a finger with a lotus flower on her coral petals and gazed at him in amazement. Grace! Why have you changed like this? Who broke your heart? Yes, brother. Love is an addiction. You have to be bound by that, she said. No sister, no. You are wrong. There is love without slavery. Shall I show you that? Look. I'm calling you. Flowerpot. Come here, he shouted. Pungazalai woke up to the sound of horse's footsteps at dawn. The dumb queen saw him riding away on his horse. She got up and ran to stop her. Before she could get off the ship and go ashore, the horse flew away. The morning was very pleasant. Punghwali's heart swelled with unprecedented excitement. From there she saw the upper deck of the ship. The prince was sleeping. Pungazalai walked along the banks of the river listening to the sweet song of the birds. A large giant parrot was sitting on a crooked branch of a tree. It was not afraid of the flower pot. Where did you come from? He stared at her as if asking. Little bird. The prince will be gone in a little while. Then you will be my companion. You will talk to me, won't you? Pungazalai asked. At that moment Punghuali. Punghuali. At first she thought it was the parrot talking when she heard the voice. No, she realized that the voice was coming from the ship. She jumped knowing that the prince was calling. But the prince was still asleep when the ship came up. As Bungasli approached him his mouth again said Bungasli. Grumbled. The woman, who was full of body, went near the prince and touched his forehead to wake him up. The prince wakes up from his sleep and dream. The sun was rising in the lower direction. 
Bongaze Lai's face shone like a blossoming lotus. Why did you call me? She asked. Did I call you by your name? I must have talked in my sleep. You sang in your sleep last night. Shouldn't I talk in my sleep? Said. The prince jumped up. Oko. I've been asleep for so long. Where's Big Mom? He asked and looked around. Samathira Kumari said that the old woman had gone on a horse early in the morning. He said, Well done. Samathira Kumari. It seems your fatigue is over. You can now take your leave. I must stay here till my friends come. Till then I am going to check this ship. Pungujali said, There. There. She pointed out. The prince looked in the direction she pointed. Far away in the sea, a large forest was visible. A small boat was also seen coming along the beach. There were five or six people in the boat. Aha! Now all the details will be known. Said the prince. The prince feared that the boat might drift ashore without him knowing he was there. So he immediately got down from the sunken ship and went along the river bank towards the beach. Punguzali followed him. The elephant followed them along. They went to the beach and stood. The forest was moving away from them. The boat was getting closer and closer to them. Pungazali, who was standing behind at first, curiously came forward in a short time. Amidst the prince's mental anxieties, Punghwali's interest cheered him up. He had a small smile on his face. He had many reasons to worry. It seemed to him that he must have been on the distant ship and that it was leaving him far away. That was it, it was seen that one person was missing from the approaching boat. There is no one in it who should be. Yes, there is the general, there is Thirumali Upar. There are players who come along, there are boats. But we will see only the youth of the monkey clan. Where is Valid Hurayan? Where is that spirited man, Asakaya Surin? Anja the hardy Thiran, the private emissary sent by Ile Aprati. Although he had only known him for two days, he had become like a long-time friend to the prince. His qualities had so impressed the prince's heart. When the boat came closer to the shore, Sinadipati and others jumped on the shore. Sinadipati Bhutavikramaksari ran and hugged the prince. Sir! You have done a good thing, can you beat us like this? How is the religion of the elephant contained? How meekly does this wicked elephant stand now? Prince! When did you arrive here? Did you see the ships of the destroyers? Where are they? Kajumbalar Periavilar asked. Sinadipati. I will tell you our story behind. Where is Vandiyathevar? Tell me. Said. That impetuous boy is going on that ship. The commander pointed to the ship that was going in the distance. Why? Why? Whose ship is that? Why is Vandiyathevar going in it? Asked the prince. Sir. I am confused. Listen to this Vaishnava. He knows your Samasara as well as that boyish nature. Said. The prince looked at Alwarkadian and said, Tirumala. Why is Vandiyathevar going in that ship? If you know, tell me quickly. Said. 